first party data. So uh, data diva Debbie Reynolds shared how first party data is the data that you share directly with the manufacturer. Uh, this week, Apple announced a lot more first party data inside Apple Wallet for iOS 15. Uh, let's start with a video of what's new, uh, thanks to CNBC. And I'll kind of pause so that we can come back and discuss the most relevant issues. Okay, so if you're ready, here we go. Let's talk about how iOS helps you better understand and explore the world around you with some great updates to Wallet, Weather, and Maps. To tell us about what's new in Wallet, here's Jennifer. With the Apple Wallet app, we set out to replace your physical wallet. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right there. <laughs> so, as Jennifer said, the goal is not to be a backup, but to replace your existing wallet, and with good reason. It's kind of annoying to have to carry around so many things when you're traveling. Uh, I, you know, honestly, I can attest to the the benefits, like the convenience of being able to use Apple Pay on my watch, uh, especially during this past year. Even if I forget my wallet, it's still possible to make a quick like purchase, uh, say at the grocery store, or the convenience store without needing to touch the card reader or even enter a code. So uh, sorry for interrupting. Let's keep going. <laughs> Starting with Apple Pay, we added payment cards to make payments safer and more secure. Next, we brought transit cards with express mode to your iPhone. You just breeze through the turnstiles in San Francisco, New York, Beijing, Tokyo, and more. And just recently, Walt Disney World added their park passes, creating magical moments as you tap to enter, ride, and explore. You can never leave home without your keys. So we're continuing to add keys to Wallet and making them even better. We started with car keys, which we're improving with ultra wideband support for an unlock and drive experience. No need to take your iPhone out of your bag or pocket. BMW and other. That's really key as well. Um, she was talking about ultra wideband support and you don't have to take your keys out of the car, but uh, out of the pocket. Uh, or out of your purse. That's really important. We'll come back to that in a bit, uh, but let's keep going. We'll ship cars with UWB starting later this year. With iOS 15, we're bringing keys for your everyday places to wallet. Starting with where you live, we're creating the fastest, most secure way to unlock your house, apartment, or flat. And where you work, just add your corporate badge and tap to enter your building or office. And where you travel with hotel keys, you'll automatically receive your key when your room is ready, even before you arrive at the hotel. Starting this fall, Hyatt Hotels will start rolling this out to over a thousand properties worldwide, creating a faster and safer experience for their guests. Anywhere you go, just tap to unlock. An incredible range of partners for locks and access systems have signed on to support keys for all the places you go. Okay, let's pause there. So now it's not just your credit card, but your transit pass, your hotel key, your car keys, your house keys, and your passport too. Uh, I don't think we actually did the passport part. Uh, why don't we keep going? I'll, I'll let, uh, we'll cover the passport part. However, to be fully free of your physical wallet, there's one more thing we need to bring to iPhone, and that's your ID. So we're bringing identity cards to Apple Wallet. This fall, you'll just scan your driver's license or state ID in participating US states. It's that easy. Your ID information is now in Wallet. Encrypted and safely stored in the secure element, the same hardware technology that makes Apple Pay private and secure. And the TSA is working to enable it's that easy. It's safe and it's secure. Oh my goodness. Okay, next one. Enable airport security checkpoints as the first place you can use your digital ID. When you present your ID, you'll know what specific information is requested and securely presented. With just a tap, you're off to your flight. So that's wallet on your iPhone and Apple Watch. Back to you, Craig. Okay, okay. So what you're seeing here is not just more convenience, 
it's the merging of your physical identity. So everything that we use for physical identity with your digital identity. So in other words, anytime you need to show some form of physical identity, uh, maybe it's a license or a passport, you can replace it with a digital version. Now, the interesting change comes not from the device itself. So it's not the Apple wallet that I'm really like fascinated about here. It's the fact that Apple has moved beyond convincing consumers to accept digital identities for items such as your credit cards. But now corporations are starting to accept your digital identity for entry into their buildings. And even governments are starting to accept a digital identity for moving across state lines and potentially even across international borders. Now, many of these functions have been available uh, in countries like China for a while through apps like WeChat. Uh, they have a WeChat wallet. What originally started out as kind of like a WhatsApp clone has quickly evolved to include more and more aspects of a person's digital identity including their Chinese ID and their bank card. So mobile payments is often the only method to pay for many vending machines in China. Uh, for example, when I traveled to Guangzhou, I remember the pain of trying to use public transportation without a mobile payment option like WeChat. I basically had to pay someone to buy me a ticket with their own phone. Um, like that's the level that it is like you don't have like you can't get onto the train if you uh, don't have like a cell phone in order to make payments.